When 15-year-old proto-pop babe Billy made it to number one, she was treading a well-worn teen wannabe path. But the early 60s were different, simpler, more innocent, when all Millie desired was a boy called Lollipop. And 15-year-old Lulu just wanted to shout. And one 60s gal is the youngest female chart topper ever. Who's he thinking about? Ruby Murray, The Shadows, Cliff Richard? No, it's Helen Shapiro. Ender Helen Shapiro was just 14 when she released her first hit single, Don't Treat Me Like a Child. Helen Shapiro was a shock to the system for me. I heard this voice coming out of the television one night, just belting out a song, and I went, whoa! You know, it's almost like he wanted to look behind her to see where the speakers were. When it came out, this record, I didn't have a record player, I couldn't play it. So we had to go around to her neighbours to play it. But I'd have died happy just holding that first single in my hand. Alan Shapiro was one of the last of that kind of light entertainment era. There were a lot of kind of trembling-lipped female balladeers around at that time. And she was young, more fun-filled than that. There wasn't anybody else around doing that. And I came along and obviously filled some gap. A few miles across London, the promotion and publicity department swings into action. I had to go up for these publicity sessions and they insisted that I wear the school uniform, even if it was weekends or school holidays. I hated it. I thought I was grown up. I was 14. I knew everything that there was to know. In just three months, Helen had scored two hits, but she was about to hear a song that would forever be her trademark. The first time I heard Walking Back to Happiness, was when John Schroeder, the composer, played it on a piano, and um cha, um cha, and I thought, I can't sing that. I thought it was so corny, but uh, I was overruled in that, and I'm very glad that I was, because Walking Back went on to be another number one, so what do I know? I have loved you more each day, walking back to happiness, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. I bought I Walking Back to Happiness, yeah. I know all the words even now to Walking Back to Happiness. How could you not dance to that record? I was a lump of wood. I didn't know what to do with my hands. They actually had to say to me to smile. Helen Shapiro received the award as most promising newcomer. The whole thing was just thrilling. You don't think beyond the next week, how long is this going to last? You have this boldness which comes from youth and ignorance, and that carried me along. I'm very glad I've left school, although, of course, I miss being with my friends and girls of my own age, but on the whole, I'm pleased about it. I couldn't wait to leave school. There was this discussion at one time of stay on for another year and, and take some shorthand or something to have a, a second string, and I thought, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be a singer. Helen went on the road, and on tour, she topped the bill over a little-known Merseyside beat combo, the Beatles. Just being here with you You've got to remember at the time, she was a big deal and the Beatles kind of weren't really, you know, so they were thinking, wow, one day maybe we'll be as big as Helen Shapiro. During the tour, the Beatles released Please Please Me, and as their popularity grew, they moved up the bill. Towards the end of that tour, of course, they got so big, it just got silly. We all knew they were going to be big, but nobody could foresee how big. Whilst the Beatles' single rose to the top of the charts, Helen's only reached number 33. Groups of guitars were on the way in and were then going to dominate the next 10 years. I was reading the NME. Uh, it said, as Helen Shapiro has been at 16. It was hurtful because I was still out there making records. I could cry my heart out for you. I mean, obviously, coming along at 14 was a novelty, and obviously that's going to wear off. By the mid-60s, although still in her teens, Helen's pop career was over. 
but reluctant to leave singing altogether, she turned to the cabaret circuit. From 65, I started doing more cabaret things, and some of those were really lovely, and then a lot of those nice places closed. So I found myself in social clubs or working men's clubs. I even found myself in a couple of strip joints, which was awful. I thought all the time I don't want to do this anymore. I hated it. I hated every minute of it. Almost on the point of finally quitting show business, Helen's manager suggested a theatre role. Helen became a star in the West End and continued to reinvent herself. This time as a jazz singer. I felt like I was being taken seriously at last as a singer rather than a 60s pop star, Helen Shapiro. Helen was a successful jazz singer for 17 years, but today her career has taken her to a different stage. Well, I'm here to tell you how I found the Messiah, namely Jesus. In 1987, my whole life was turned on its head for the better. Um, everything that I had done before then paled into insignificance. Funny, but it's true. I sing walking back on these outreaches uh, and I get people joining in. Walking back to happiness again. Because it actually has quite a lot of meaning to me now, ever since I became a believer in Jesus. So uh, I'm very grateful for that. Back to happiness again. It fades at the end. Thank you.